You seem cool. Todd, you seem cool. Hey, you too, Joe. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's like it's the first time we met. It's not, people. Spoiler alert, okay? We had yeah. internet issues. <laughs> we've already done this. This is a, this is a different outfit for both of us. Uh, we've changed. It's, it's a different time. My hair's a little longer. Um, I'm a little bit more unkempt. But uh, it was such a great episode, Todd, that I wanted to make sure people got to hear our conversation. I appreciate it. I uh, no no problem at all. Uh, I think that the the internet issues were more on my end anyway. So at least I'll take the blame for it. Uh, I don't want to point any fingers. Um, so yeah, but, but, <laughs> it appears though that you are. No, no, I was just fixing my hair. I don't know. So, are you saying that my? Oh, I, I thought you were giving me a cue there that maybe I, my hair was. No, I was saying it's not really anybody's like fault specifically. I was just saying <laughs> it was could have been anybody. So, oh, I I. So you're saying, okay, no, I get yeah, it. No, that's, I thought I had cool. a little something. I was, I was not saying it's your fault. I was saying, it, was, it I just feels had though that you are. It's still, I mean, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just. It's, you're probably paranoid. just in your. It's probably yeah. you're just in your head. I'm in my own head, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's. Todd fucked up. You seem cool. Todd, you seem cool. What's up, buddy? Joe Gatto, I am pretty cool. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this. Uh, this is uh, this is why I love you. I love Todd because I you genuinely made me laugh so hard. And I came into your stuff a little bit later, so I was able to go down. Uh, uh, what's that uh, rabbit hole? Most people think that uh, I probably look even better nude. And uh, what's that? Nobody said that. Even people who see me nude, uh, especially people who've seen me nude. I like my coffee the way I like my dog. Warm and cuddly. What's that? Don't ever do that again. <laughs> In a way that was uh, probably a severe waste of time, but very fun. Sure, <laughs> sure. My wife and I are married almost 14 years and she calls that a, a severe waste of time as well, so. <laughs> Oh, that's good. See, you're you married a smart lady. I don't know what to tell you. Where do you where are you from? Where do you live? Tacoma, Washington. You're in Tacoma, Washington. Just okay. a little south of Seattle. Yeah. Are you from uh, Washington originally? From that side of the? Yep. Yeah. Originally from Bellingham, and then uh, we moved to North Carolina for a few years, and then we came back to Tacoma. Got yeah, back to Tacoma. Okay. Wow. Look at that. What's that little? Uh, there's a little Christmas town in Washington that's pretty famous. Leavenworth. Yeah, that was one of those places that I've lived here my entire life and only experienced it for the first time maybe four years ago. That's crazy. And uh, yeah, and, and I had never even heard about it until we moved to North Carolina and people kept asking me about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, that's that gives you a reason to go. It's like, I best everybody's talking about it. I got to go check it out, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> what am I missing? <laughs> what am I, I'm missing out on something. Um, so you, uh, you've got a pretty interesting story uh, from... Uh, a wrestler to a, uh, a stand-up comedian. What would you say is your passion between those two? <laughs> Comedy, definitely. I, okay. I I can't say that I wasted 18 years in wrestling because I, I learned a lot. I would say that I wasted eight years. I think the first 10 years was good. Okay. Uh, the last eight was kind of nonsensical. You perform stand-up uh, regularly now, right? Yeah, yeah. It's actually, I'm, I'm about to go on the road uh, right now for a couple of days and uh over the next couple of months i'm doing everything from um, most of it's in washington but i am going down to reno at the end of may and um uh, talking to somebody about going down to california for a few days so starting to get out there a lot more oh cool man all because of what good that? that's congrats, <laughs> man <laughs> i mean isn't it amazing what uh the digital you know the digital medium could do and then all of a sudden you're just out there and able to pursue even harder your dream that's really cool man yeah for sure for sure. The TikTok was the thing that I did um, just because, you know, it's the it's uh, it's the pandemic and you're home and you're I'm trying to think of something creative to do. And I had 15 people following me. So there's no rules. So I didn't care. And uh, next thing I know, I start talking to somebody off camera and then I have half a million followers and uh, can go yeah. perform at other places. I really I, I really appreciate the whole like 
the the concept that you did. I think it was so it's so smart. It's so funny. It's a great way to make a commentary on stuff, especially where like, you know, everybody's got something to say and everybody's got an opinion on things like it's really just really fun and lighthearted and a, a really smart way to make people laugh. So I really enjoy it. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. What made you make the change from the wrestling to stand up? Was it like, all right, like, was it always like uh, from, from comedy? You're like, I have to do comedy enough with this wrestling or was it wrestling? And then you're like, I have to find something else to do. No, no. I, uh, so when I was younger, I was always bouncing back and forth between which I wanted to do it, it, For some reason in my mind, you could only pursue one. Um, and so uh, I actually tried to do stand up first and uh, I, I booked myself, uh, I lied to, to this uh, restaurant that was local that had music, they had live music and I lied to them and I said I was a professional comedian when I was 19. And uh, I showed up and I had nothing, like I had nothing planned at all. Like I hadn't written anything, I didn't understand anything about stand up. And I showed up and I got scared out of my mind and I turned and I ran away. Um, and then a couple of years later, I wound up starting with wrestling. I literally got pulled out of the crowd by a wrestler who was, uh, who was then told by the state athletic commission that he had to go out and apologize to me because they were afraid I was going to sue the state because he touched me. Um, but I knew that he was the trainer at the local wrestling promotion. So we started talking next thing I know I'm doing that. But the entire time that I was wrestling, I kept wanting to, I kept saying, you know, maybe I'll try stand up. Maybe I'll try stand up. And then I never did until I was like 39. <laughs> well, yeah. It's funny because I always, you know, I didn't get my, on television until I was like 34. I was like, great, just as everything's falling apart, I'll get on to <laughs> high definition television. <laughs> so the, 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 the cool, they made a big mistake for us. We were in standard definition for a long time. And then in like season, I think it was season three, they put us in high definition. And I remember seeing it for the first time being like, oh my God, that's what it looked like. <laughs> My chin is sitting on my collar. <laughs> it looks like I have a cantaloupe rind under my neck and I'm trying to hold it. <laughs> Don't we have Photoshop that we could fix this? There's no Photoshop for life, baby. <laughs> so I started like caring about what I looked like a little bit more on camera. Like I was like, I need to like get maybe a nicer shirt or something that blouses a little more. I'm feeling a little snug in the <laughs> trunk. <laughs> So, yeah. I was just having a, a conversation with a friend of mine yesterday because he's like, you know, you, you really should think about maybe trying to get in to Hollywood or something like that. And I said, I said, yeah, I said, maybe I, I said uh, I would need to lose some weight for sure. I said, you know, like, it's OK. I can be the fat guy, but I can't really necessarily be the morbidly obese guy. And he's like, you know, you can also just do that for your health. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> You're like, yeah, 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 sure. There's that too. I'm sure you might want to stick around. Right. So <laughs> sure there's help. Yeah, there's comedy. You know, fat guys are funny. It's proven. It's proven. Name some right. of your favorite your favorite fat funny guys, right? John Candy, right? There's a lot of fat funny guys. Yep. Try to name Harley. me a lot of skinny funny guys. It's gonna be a little bit harder. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Um, who were some of your uh, who were some of your faves growing up? Like comedy influences that you would say that you appreciate their comedy. Oh man, so I'm a huge fan of uh, like Jim Gaffigan is like a huge one. Uh, Tom Papa. Uh, um, when I was like when I was younger, uh, there was a lot of uh, a lot of people like I like I remember seeing Dave Chappelle's first TV um, show that he did was HBO's Comic Relief and just following along with Chappelle the entire time, uh, which was really cool to do. Um, but I just always had like a, a huge wide variety of, I'd, I'd even do the thing where I pretended like I thought comedians from like the sixties and seventies were great because you recognize that they are great, but also it doesn't really resonate that well when you're not from that era, <laughs> but you always have to be like, Oh my God. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Lenny Bruce was a genius. It's like, <laughs> He was for sure for that time, but at the same time, you know, you're just saying it to sound like you're right. cool. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will say I, I'm pretty similar in in my thing, but the, probably one of the coolest performances I was ever able to see was one of the last performances of Don Rickles. Sal's a huge Don Rickles fan. You know, my friend Sal from Practice Germany. So he's a huge Don Rickles fan, uh, fan, and they were playing. He was playing down in Atlantic City. We're in, from the East Coast here, and. My mom was a big degenerate gambler and they always comp their tickets to everything. And I'm like, mom, you got to get the seats to the Don Rickles show, which was impossible to get because it was like one of his last ones. And we got 
in and we got to watch her perform. And it was what, you know, when you're just watching somebody that's just unbelievable and like totally worth like all the hype and whatnot. I was like, it was just you literally just watching an, a, a legend perform. Like that was one of the coolest standup performances I hands down had ever seen. But then I was like, I'm thinking about other comedians of his era. And I'm like, I guess it's that comedy that speaks to you, not necessarily the era, you know? So just the way he was able to be so likable with all the stupid, shit, like the mean shit he was saying, such a great skill set. <laughs> oh my God. And it's so funny that you said that too, because uh, I, uh, probably about two or three years before he passed away, I had this thing where I was like, I'm going to go see Rickles live. I'm going to go to Vegas. I can, you know, even if I don't do the whole weekend or anything like that, because it, it didn't have a lot of money. I was like, even if I just fly in and find something to do and then go to the show and hang out at the airport and then go home, I'll just do that. And when I looked up his website, he was performing in Washington. So me and my parents got to see Rickles like maybe three years before he passed away. And that was definitely, yeah, you're, you're hundred wow. percent right. There's something else about Don Rickles. That's great. Yeah. He was, uh, he, he was unbelievable too. You know, I wasn't big, I was more of a sitcom television guy than I was really a stand-up guy growing up for comedy influence, but hands down more movies. Like I was more of a movie comedy movie influence. Like Mel Brooks is probably one of the, you know, the, the biggest things for me. Blazing Saddles. I just recently watched it again. That's there's nothing better than that movie. And it does do the, it, it definitely pushes the line for sure, but it does it in the best possible way and for the best possible reasons. And the, the message that the movie has all together, they just push the line. They package it perfectly. He did he yeah. did such a great job of packaging that movie in such a way that you couldn't like, you can't even, like, I don't even know how his brain worked that well to do it. Like uh, he's, he's, just, he's just a genius. He's phenomenal. Yeah, hundred percent. How do you like uh, being part of the community and now the fandom like, do you enjoy, like, when people, like, now people, I'm sure, make requests for you, like, what things they want you to talk about, and you get stuff in the comments. Like, are you enjoying the social aspect of social media? I mean, honestly, one of the coolest things, I, somebody suggested that I do Cameo, which I thought was ridiculous that I would do that. But I actually got a lot of requests for Cameo, and it was for a lot of, like, serious stuff. There's people battling depression that they talked about how, like, watching TikTok on a daily basis and seeing some of my stuff was helping them, and... Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. You don't really realize when you're, when you're doing comedy or whatever, you don't realize I, how much you're really reaching people. And especially now when no one's really having the best time of their life, except for maybe people who manufacture masks. Uh, but everybody else right. is kind of, uh, you know, and, and then they're dealing with their own personal stuff anyway. And if you can, you know, you, when you get that feedback from people who appreciate what you're doing, it's just, it's, humbling it's and it's so amazing well, I, I am i'm one of those people i'm a i'm a fan of you uh you you seem cool and i was right uh you've proven me right i really appreciate the laugh you've, you've brought me and uh thanks so much and it was great to talk with you it was so great to talk to you thank you uh, remember me when you're world famous please i'll try i'll, I'll see what i can do yeah.